People of God, may God, who is the God of grace, mercy, and peace, be with you now and always, breaking down the walls that separated you from the Father, but now reuniting Him with your, reuniting Him as your Savior. And it seems like part of our nature, our very nature, is to build things. Just go back to one of the earliest stir- stories of Scripture. All the way back to Genesis chapter 11. You have the assembly of the Tower of Babel. Already, early in Scripture, we have this building project. And we know it to be true, just in our own lives, don't we? We like to build things. We like to put them together. We love to express our ingenuity, our uniqueness, to see how high, how long, how wide we can build things. In particular, we like to build walls. In fact, over 2,000 years, the Chinese spent building the Great Wall of China, what is now known as the Great Wall of China. They built that wall for protection, and they saw that need to build this wall stone after stone, brick after brick, year after year. In 1961, another wall that you are all probably very familiar with, some of you have lived through, was the building of the the Berlin Wall. As the East Germans tried to flee to West Germany, the, the wall was built to keep the East Germans under communist rule. Even in our own backyards, We have a wall that divides us, a fence rather, that divides us from Mexico, that we've put up, that stretches and spans almost from one end of the United States at least halfway across to the other. Even in our own homes, we have walls. Fences around our property, walls in our house. And we build these walls for protection. We put them up and whether to protect us from the climate or protect us from, from any other nefarious deeds. Some walls are good. Some walls have a purpose. But all walls have one, the, have one purpose in the same, and that is separation. And sometimes this is good and sometimes it's bad. Because when you think about it, those walls of separation protect us. They guard and keep us. They help us to stay safe. But some of these walls can cause harm. They can cause problems. They can cause difficulties. Not so long, almost 30 years after that wall went up in Berlin, Ronald Reagan gave Mikhail Gorbachev a challenge. And I think most of you could say it with me. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Well, I thought that was more famous than, uh, than that. Uh, but apparently not. Well, apparently, and back in 1987, uh, President Ronald Reagan at that time gave the challenge to Gorbachev to tear down the wall. Because it's not only was it a physical wall that divided Germany, East Germany from West Germany, but it had become a wall of uh, it just in the very dividing the country in half. And when they tore down that wall, just a couple years later, It brought about unification to Germany. And we like to see that unification, don't we? We like to see those good news stories of people being brought back together, people being reunited. We love to hear the stories of of a a lost family member. Just this last week, a, a young child who was trapped in a sewer pipe being recovered to his family. We love to hear that reunification because it rings so true in our own lives, in our own story. Because as we think about our own reunification, God reunified us with Christ. As Paul wrote his epistle today, he wasn't just talking about the separation of Jew and Gentile, which there was a wall there quite literally separating them in the temple. But he was talking about the separation of salvation that was open to us by Christ Jesus. When Christ broke down that wall, when he tore down that barrier, he opened for each one of us the way to salvation. By his own suffering, by his own death, he brought us into the family. We don't approach God as beggars, as, as slaves, but we approach God as children who have been bought in by, washed and brought in by holy baptism. We approach God as his, as his sons and daughters, as heirs. We love to hear that, don't we? We enjoy hearing that promise of unification because we know it, we need it. We know that our lives are so ununified, disunified, that our lives are so broken and so separated. We know that even in our close relationships, that there are walls that have formed, that there are walls that divide us, that go right through the very center of our hearts. There are some of you who are probably sitting here thinking about the walls in your own life. Think about the walls that you have built. Some of you with the walls between you and your spouse. Maybe you live in the same roof. Watch TV together. Maybe eat dinner together. Read books together, but... What happens when you turn off the computer, turn off the TV, put down the books, and sit down with one another? Is there a bit of a tension there? Is there there that wholeness there? Some of you have built walls in your life between 
your children or your children have built those walls between you and them. Those walls stand there and they, they tower in your lives and, and you try to approach one another for reconciliation, but those walls get in the way. Sometimes those children still live under our, house, under our roof. Sometimes they've moved out. And it's hard to make those phone calls then to get together. Some of us have built walls with our family members in general. You know, you have that crazy aunt or that crazy uncle, that relative who you just don't talk to. When you see them at bonds, you turn and run the opposite direction. When, you're, when you drive to work, you intentionally go the wrong way so, or a different way so you don't have to run into them. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know what those walls that I'm referring to Because not only are they in your family, but they're amongst us everywhere. We build these walls, and some of these walls are good. They protect us from those who might harm us. But some of these walls, they drive others away from us and drive people out from us. And as we build these walls, as we put these walls up in our lives, these are walls that take us away from the full peace that God has promised us. Just hear again Paul's words about Christ. Christ's purpose was to create in himself one new man out of two thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. Christ put to death that hostility, that dividing wall. But our walls continue to stand, even though we have these, this direct route to God, our Father. We still have these walls that are formed between us. And some of these walls go deep. Some of these walls are impregnable. They've been grown hardened over time. And it's hard to unearth these walls, isn't it? It's hard to dig down and look and see where they started. But as we look at our lives as Christian people, as we look at our lives with our fellow believers, as we look at our lives with the world, how many of these walls have formed out of hostility? How many of these walls are robbing us of true peace that we would have with our friends, with our family, with our loved ones, with our Lord, most importantly? See, the peace that the Bible talks about isn't the peace that the world talks about. When we talk about peace in the world, well, what is, how would you answer that? If someone asked you to describe peace, how would you say, well, how would you de- describe it? How would you define it? If someone said, what is world peace? What does that look like? Do you know? A lot of dictionaries define peace as, as so empty to me, as simply the absence of violence or the absence of hate. But that's not merely what the biblical definition of peace is. When we see peace in the Old Testament, that word shalom, when we hear peace in the New Testament or ene, both those pieces are not referring to just that empty absence of violence or hate, but so much more than that. A wholeness, a fullness in our hearts. That peace that that is in the Scriptures comes from the salvation we have through Christ. That right relationship we have with our Savior. That peace that that our Savior Jesus Christ has given to us is that peace that Scripture talks about time and time again. And it's not meant for one time. Maybe you've heard people, when, when we start the service, we do this, but you know the tradition goes back to the time of the Jews. Peace be with you. Peace be among you, and it was not just meant for that one moment, but for the whole family. That peace was meant, and as Christ speaks that peace to us, he doesn't mean it to be an empty peace, but it is a fullness of our hearts. But we're robbed of that, aren't we? We're robbed of that because of the brokenness of our relationships, because of the brokenness of our lives. We're robbed of that because of the walls we build around our hearts and in our hearts. We're robbed of that because we put a wall up to keep others out, and it ends up keeping our God out. Did you ever think about it that way? That those walls that you formed to keep those others out actually keeps God out. Now there's nothing that can truly keep our Lord out. But we run from that peace. When we build those walls, we turn from that peace. We lose that peace. We lose that wholeness and that fullness of heart. When we turn back to our God. He breaks those walls down. He takes those walls down and he tears them down one brick at a time. But there's also part of it that we're responsible for. How many of us know in our own lives that those walls form because of us? How many of us know in our own lives that we have placed those one brick on top of the other? How many of us in our own lives 
have said or done things to drive people from us. When we look at those walls that are built, our Savior tears them down, but we keep rebuilding them. He calls us to look at those walls. He calls us to come to Him in prayer and to reconsider those walls that we have built, to start taking those walls down, to come to those people that have hurt us or we have been hurt by, that, that, that we have hurt, to come to them and to seek reconciliation. And that's hard, isn't it? It's hard to seek reconciliation with someone who has hurt you or with someone you have hurt. Because you don't know that tension's there. And we don't always want to do that. We don't always want to approach that person we could, because it could be painful. And we could be further hurt. But our Lord encourages us to break down those walls. To break down those barriers. To tear down those divisions. He didn't just break down the wall between the Jew and the Gentile just so that they could talk about salvation together, but so that they could live as one man, one people. If we read a little further in our epistle, you see that God talks about us as one church founded on Him. But we can't have one church, one people, if we keep building those walls up around us. The only way we can break down those walls is one brick at a time, is to take each of those bricks to go to the person to seek reconciliation, to go to our spouse, to go to our children, to go to our family, to go to our friends, to go to them, to talk to them when they are, when, whether or not they're ready. And maybe the first time you approach them, it won't be easy. But oftentimes the first place to start is to ask for forgiveness. Because even if we don't feel we've done something wrong, we know that we have sinned. And even when we feel we haven't done something wrong, we call that self-righteousness. And there is no righteousness in self-righteousness. But the only way we can go to those people who we've built those walls dividing us is first by going to our Savior. It's first by going to Him and seeing that He has torn down all that has divided us from our, sa from our Father in Heaven. To go to Him and see that He does have the power to defeat the brokenness in our lives, to, re to mend the families, to mend our, our, our relationships. The only way we can do that is if we first start with Him. Just right at the end of our reading for today, Paul uh, issued this challenge, didn't he? And I encourage you to turn in your bulletins. This is uh, starting in chapter, uh, verse 19 of Ephesians 2. You people of God are no longer foreigners and aliens but are fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. We are the dwelling place of God. We are his children and we are the ones who he is the foundation of. When we found our relationships, we found our lives in him. He will build us up. And He will not build those walls around us. He tears those walls down. He destroys those walls. We're not as effective, but we can do. We can tear down those walls one brick at a time. And that is by the power of our Savior. That is by the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Because we know those walls don't only dwell here among us in the church, dwell among us here among us in our families, but those walls have firmly been founded among, not only around the church, but to keep people out of the church. It seems like the, the church for so long have felt, has gotten comfortable. We've, got, we've been content to just be together as a people. But God, Christ has torn down that wall. He has opened to all people the gift of salvation. We come to Him and we receive that gift, not as people who deserve it, but as children who, who, are, who have been bought with the price of Christ's sacrifice. And just as we receive that gift so freely, God offers that gift so freely to the people in our communities, the people in our state, in our country, the people even around the world. God offers that gift. And He's breaking down walls to do it so that we might be built up, so that we might be built up as the temple of the Lord, that we might be built up to be the people of God, declaring His love to others. The people of God who first heard His love to us. The people of God 
who have been brought to a peaceful relationship with our Savior. And so as the people of God, may we break down those walls. May we break down those barriers, not by our power, not by our might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. May we break down those walls so that we may know the wholeness and the fullness of God's peace. Peace be with you. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, in the world of sin that we live in, there are many broken relationships. There are relationships that have been torn apart by anger, by hurt, by loss. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would restore these relationships by your power, that you would change hearts and lives, that even among us as Christians, that we may seek peace and not hostility. Lord, we pray that not only would we break down the walls in our lives, but that you would break down the walls that separate our church from the community, from those who need to hear your gospel so badly. Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts and lives, that we may share that peace, that we may share that shalom with all people. Lord, help us to, in the midst of the chaos of this world, share your love for others, share your mercy for others, and may your peace go forth from us. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep us now and always. Amen.